Hey everyone, Adam here. So I know it's been a very long time and this video is well overdue, but finally wanted to talk about the Awesome Windows Manager. Now, in the past I have mentioned the Awesome Windows Manager, uh, why I like it, and uh, kind of keeping on the same theme of comparing different desktop environments slash window managers, I thought I would finally dive into the Awesome Windows Manager and why I keep coming back to this thing. Uh, don't get me wrong, I really like the Unity desktop environment. Again, I'm probably in the minority when I say that. But uh, in the end, I primarily use the awesome Windows Manager. Um, and uh, again, this <laughs> this desktop, and or I'm sorry, this Windows Manager is probably not for everyone, but um, you know, I'll, I'll talk about the pros and cons and why you may want to consider using this. So. Uh, as you can see, this is my configuration of the awesome Windows Manager. Uh, I've themed it kind of heavily. So uh, what I want to do now is I want to show you what the uh, stock uh, uh, awesome Windows Manager actually looks like because, again, I've themed this uh, pretty heavily. So, uh, you know, and setting this up uh, by all is not, not easy. Um, so we'll just call this A, and then now I'm just going to restart the awesome Windows Manager. And this is it. This is what a default awesome Windows Manager experience looks like. Uh, as you can see, you uh, don't really get much. Um, Conky won't be running. This is customized, so kind of ignore this. In fact, hold on. Let me just uh, kill all Conky at the moment. Okay, this is something that you would get. As you can see, this is pretty daunting at first. Um, oh wait, and kill all LX panel. Okay, now, now this is primarily something that you're gonna get. Uh, sorry, I forgot I had all these other uh, little processes running that uh, I've set up, but I've configured this. Anyway, this is the default version of Awesome that you're gonna get. Uh, it looks pretty sparse, looks pretty plain, uh, not much to it. You have these nine tags up here. Now, granted, I have stuff open on them, but um, this is the default configuration for this. So the way this works, this is what is called a tiling window manager. Now, uh, the default is to have um, overlapping window manage, uh, overlapping windows. So for example, and this is what everyone is used to, if you have two windows, um, oh, sorry, let me open up uh, Google Chrome here. So, um, this is what they call overlapping windows, right? They overlap. Um, so what this is made to do is you can have overlapping windows, which is which is kind of nice, um, but you can also have what they call tiling windows. Now, what I love about this is this can be driven by mouse. It can also be driven by the keyboard. So primarily the way things work for me, I usually compare two or three applications side by side. That's just my workflow. Now I know in Unity and modern desktops, you can you, know, you can basically take this and drag this to the side and tile it and drag this other one to the side and tile that. But the problem really comes in um, when I uh, have like three windows open. Um, so this is great because then I can just use the keyboard shortcuts, for example, the Windows key or the mod key. I'll call it the mod key. So in this example, Windows key always equals the mod key. So I'll refer to the Windows key on your keyboard. It's the one with the little Windows icon as the mod key. Uh, so when you hit your mod key, Shift, and then J, it will cycle through the various applications. If you hit the mod key and the letter L on your keyboard, it will, as you can see, it's making this one tile bigger. If I hit H, it will make it uh, smaller on the left-hand side and bigger on the right-hand side. And again, these, if you're familiar with Vim, uh, is kind of the default Vim kind of uh, ideology. Again, uh, Vim, in case you don't know it, is a text editor that basically uses uh, the keys uh, to kind of like navigate around, uh, basically your home row. So 
What I really like about this is I can make a nice big window on the left hand side and then two smaller windows on the right hand side. Uh, what I also like is like, let's say I'm focusing on some internet research. I'm just gonna go to CNN for right now. Um, and then I'm like, oh, you know what? I need to move my, um, my file manager over. Um, I can easily jump over to the file manager, hit the shift mod key K and boom, it immediately fills that left hand screen. I cannot do that with a traditional desktop. With like Unity, I have to go through some gymnastics, like two or three moves in order to kind of like achieve the same thing. The other nice thing with the Tiling Window Manager is I can use my uh, mouse. So for example, if I hold down the mod key and then I just drag into this area, it automatically moves this window into that kind of preset tile that I've kind of set up, which is really nice. So I can just quickly just drag, drop, drag, drop, and uh, very quickly do that. And I can also do it with keyboard shortcuts. Also focus. So right now I'm focused, as you can see on the internet, or the, I'm sorry, my uh, 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 basically web browser. If I hit the mod key plus J, I immediately get focus onto my uh, file manager. If I hit the mod key plus J again, then I immediately cycle through and I go to, uh, you know, my terminal. So we'll just start that up. Um, closing application, super easy. It's the shift key mod key plus the letter C. Uh, I'm gonna open up a terminal real quick. So if you go to man awesome, once you have this installed, <clears throat> then you can see, oh, man. Awesome, helps if I can spell awesome. Then you can see these are all the keyboard shortcuts that are the default within the awesome Windows Manager. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna close all of these guys. Actually, I'll keep the terminal up um, and we'll shift this, we'll shift this back over. Um, <clears throat> so then uh, up here, you have different layouts. So right now I'm kind of in this, you know, left and right kind of vertical kind of layout. Um, you can also do it on the other side where the right hand side now just has one application. So meaning if I open up another, another application, um, it just kind of stacks these over on the left hand side. I don't use that that much. This is more like a, a horizontal kind of stacking. Um, you know, which is, uh, can be nice on wide screens. I don't find it super, super helpful. Um, maybe if I was doing some programming and stuff like that, I could kind of set that up and see that being mildly helpful, but I don't use it that much. So, uh, this is, um, you know, there's also an equal thing. You can also put things in like maximum states. So this is in full screen mode. Uh, this is kind of like a, uh, it brings focus to the one application up front. Actually, you know, I should probably use, I may use this mode more often. This could actually be kind of helpful where you kind of see the others in the background. Uh, currently, I don't have this set up on mine, but you know, that could be helpful to kind of navigate around. Hmm, all right, I'll have to play around with that. Great. So that's the nice thing about these videos is uh, myself, I kind of like, forget that I've set things up the way that I have, and then I find something helpful for myself. Um, and then now we're back to the beginning, which this is the, the what they call the floating mode. So now you can kind of grab these. Now, as you can see, the default is to have no title bars. So how in the world do you drag this around? Well, you have to hit the mod key. And then if you hit the left mouse button, uh, then you can kind of drag this around the screen. If you hit the right mouse button while holding down the mod key, you can see that then you can drag to resize these. So then this works just like you're kind of used to in a floating window manager. Um, there's also a whole bunch of other keyboard shortcuts. Um, you know, uh, you can uh, set this up so that, you know, you can be in tiling mode and then you can set one of these into, um, you can set one of these into uh, uh, floating mode or, you know, uh, the mod key plus M will immediately maximize that particular application that you're on, uh, which can be kind of helpful. And then it kind of sends it back. So basically, this is fantastic for keyboard driven people. It's great if you want two or three applications to look at side by side. 
It's great if you want complete 100% customization of your window management environment. Now, downsides. As you can see, it's pretty sparse. Where in the world is my uh, sound? I have no sound up here in my icons. Why don't I have sound? Well, it's because the sound module didn't start when the awesome Windows Manager started. So you have to configure all that. Wow, that sounds like a lot of work. It is. It took me probably two months to feel comfortable with the awesome Windows Manager. It broke every paradigm in my head in order to figure out how to use this thing. So for example, right now, how would I connect to a Wi-Fi network? You know, in most desktop environments, you're used to just right clicking and it's there. Well, the NM applet hasn't launched yet because the awesome Windows Manager is bare bones. It didn't tell the M NM applet to launch. If I launch it, then you see the icon come up. I'm connected by ethernet, but this is how then I could connect to a wireless if I had a wireless card on my system. So as you can see, um, you learn a lot. So that's another advantage of the awesome Windows Manager. You learn a tremendous amount. Uh, so <clears throat> lots of pros and cons to all of it. How do you configure it? Let me show you. I'm gonna open this up with GVim. I've been experimenting with GVim. This is how you configure it. It's all through code. It's not easy. It's taken me a tremendous amount of work. Now, as you can see, this is my, uh, it's, it's in um, uh, uh, Lua. Uh, and again, I take it from me. I have no programming experience. If you've seen some of my simple scripts, uh, you can tell that I am a horrible programmer. Like many people have commented, like how like, like something that took me 15 lines of code to write someone came by and was like oh you could do this with one one line of code so clearly i am not an expert in programming but this was great because i was able to figure it out i was able to figure it out at my own pace so um i kind of knocked kde because i was like oh my god this is going to take me months and months to figure out you know how my layout works well the awesome windows manager is kind of the same idea it took me months and months to figure it out however it felt so much rewarding compared to kde because at least like i'm going through configuration files like i learned about the nm applet which you know I didn't know ran in the background. So like I learned how, I, I truly learned how modular Linux really was when I started playing around with the Awesome Windows Manager because I needed to figure that stuff out. So um, if you're gonna use the Awesome Windows Manager, <clears throat> uh, my recommendation is uh, try it in a virtual box, see if you like it first. It's very, very easy to install. The nice thing is since it's so lightweight and minimum, it really won't mess up, at least to my knowledge. Uh, I've had fantastic luck installing it with tons of other desktop environments, such as XFCE, LXDE, even Unity. And, and it plays very, very nicely because it's such a minimum install. So I know if you start mixing desktop environments, people say, eh, you know, you could run into some issues. And I have, you know, with running like um, uh, Mate and the Unity desktop or XFCE installing that on top of Unity. But honestly, with the awesome Windows Manager, I've really not had any issues whatsoever installing it on top because it is so minimal. So you could do that. You could just, if you're running Unity right now, install the awesome Windows Manager and then during login, uh, you can just select the awesome Windows Manager and see if it's for you. If this is, again, something that interests you. Um, but then you can start configuring things that you want, uh, and then you can start troubleshooting. So for example, like some of this code here, uh, I had to solve um, this plugin container and this exe. Uh, this was basically uh, code to fix YouTube. Whenever I went into flow, uh, uh, full screen mode, it kind of mess, mess things up. Um, <clears throat> so again, this is my awesome Windows Manager. This is everything that I start as soon as the awesome windows manager starts up uh unity settings daemon that is uh to get uh everything to look really nice um synapse lxe panel in fact it's like right now i just switched my code real quick <clears throat> to make it look like uh, a stock uh, awesome windows manager install you have nine tags i don't like the nine tags i don't like all these default layouts so i customize everything so let me just quickly revert back to this to my def to, to basically what I've configured over months and months. Um, this is basically what I have. Now, as you remember, like the default didn't have these title bars. I turned these title bars on. Now, a lot of people running the awesome Windows Manager would probably laugh at me for having title bars. Why do I have title bars? Because now, instead of holding down the mod key, I can just grab this title bar and then just drag it into the area that I want it to initially snap to, right? Which is very, very convenient. 
again, I use the Awesome Windows Manager uh, very different than most people using the Awesome Windows Manager. They tend to be, like if you look at the Awesome Windows Manager in the way most people use it, like it looks just like this. They have just, it's just terminal after terminal after terminal. I love the Tiling Window Manager, but I'm also like, you know, I rely on my web browser quite a bit. Um, I've been experimenting with GVim. I rely on the tags. I game. Like, I really just use it just for a, a very nice clean layout, but I really like using the mouse and, you know, this is really nice. Plus, um, you know, now I can close a program by just hitting this, for example. Um, <clears throat> you know, I can maximize it. Um, so, so again, this is something that's that's neat about the awesome Windows Manager. You can figure it however you want. So I'm a little bit unique because I'm not sold just on the terminal way of doing things in Linux. Uh, I like to be able to use the mouse, so I've kind of configured it that, that way. Um, as you can see, I have LX uh, a panel uh, LX panel up here just to configure my temperature and uh, CPU usage. Again, you could make widgets to do this in the awesome Windows Manager. I just I don't know. I just felt that this was much easier. People may say this is a little bit more overhead. I've got a good desktop. I don't care. It was just easier. Um, <clears throat> this is the NM applet, uh, which usually I don't have starting at startup because I never uh, reconfigure my internet or anything. Um, the other thing I find very helpful is using something like Synapse or something so you can just quickly type whatever you're looking for, like terminal or Nautilus or dictionary. Uh, I've set up a, a ton of keyboard shortcuts uh, for this. Um, the other thing I was doing, although I don't do it anymore, is I was having whenever you click on an uh, uh, on the application with the middle mouse button, um, I actually had code in there to actually kill that application, which was fantastic. Except when I started gaming, and the middle mouse button like panned around my map, and then I quit that game. I was like, oh, that was because of my awesome Windows management code. So now I've kind of gotten away from that. But if you don't game and you don't use that middle mouse, you know, you can do awesome things like that. That's why it's the awesome Windows Manager. Now, there are tons of other tiling window managers. Um, this was, to be honest, the first one that I ever tried. And then I just invested a whole bunch of time to learn it. Um, so if you are interested in uh, tiling window managers, awesome may not be the perfect one for you. Uh, it's just the one that I kind of fell with at first. Now, if people are interested, I have no idea if people are even interested in something like this. Um, I'd be more than happy to go through my setup, how long it took, and, and go even to even more detail than what I'm going in, you know, like all, all of these, you know, how did I configure the memory uh, widget here at the time, uh, my little volume app here, uh, which again has taken a tremendous amount of time, how I kind of laid it out, how I got the, you know, the uh, the themes working, because that's pretty difficult. Um, you know, I, could, I would be more than happy to go through all that. I just don't know if there's an interest, you know, like I relabeled my tags up here just to keep organized. But again, like, uh, uh, look how, excuse me, look how quick uh, this whole thing is, just launching applications and closing applications and, 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 and moving stuff around. I mean, I'm just, you know, just using the keyboard shortcuts just to move stuff around, launch stuff um, that I have set up over time with my keyboard shortcuts. Um, it's just a, a fantastic way to go. You know, uh, I just no complaints whatsoever. Um, I have, as far as stability goes, I had it crash maybe like once out of the two or three years I've been using it, maybe twice. Um, been highly, highly stable, especially when compared to, to something like Unity. Um, I love the, the fact that, you know, I can quickly just, you know, click on a tag, just quickly cycle through. So here I only use like four layouts. No, wait, one, two, Three, three layouts. <laughs> you know, I've like really stripped this down to maximize, tiling, and floating. Um, you know, so even if I'm in tiling, you can also use the keyboard shortcuts to like rearrange. So now I've got them all equal. Uh, you can move this over. So uh, just tons of stuff. The keyboard shortcuts, it, admittedly, it, it took me a while to get used to. Uh, that's something you're just going to have to take the time. Uh, the manual is fantastic for that. It goes through some of the documentation. Um, let's see, what version of Awesome am I on? And, oh. Let's see. Awesome version. Okay, so I'm on an older version, 3.4.15. Uh, 
Uh, I think the latest version is 3.5, if I'm not mistaken. Again, I'm on Ubuntu 14.04, and that just kind of came within the repos. Um, so if you wanted to update to something newer, you probably could. But like I already spent the time with the uh, with my uh, uh, with my Lua code. Uh, I think it did change between uh, 13.4 uh, and or I'm sorry, 3.4 and 3.5. So I just, uh, I don't know. I mean, um, my goal is to ride this out 14.04 with the awesome Windows Manager until I need to update uh, Ubuntu itself. Um, it's been highly stable. I really, really love this version of Ubuntu. Again, I do miss Unity. Like there's no hot corners. I do miss the hot corners. Uh, I do miss the HUD. Uh, but man, I gotta tell you, just being able to tile has just been fantastic. Um, and the nice thing about Linux is it's from your from your startup, it's real easy to switch whatever feeling, or I'm sorry, whatever mood you're in. I mean, sometimes I am in a Unity mood. Sometimes I'm in uh, an awesome Windows Manager mood. Uh, that's most of the time. Um, my couple of complaints with the awesome Windows Manager is um, the global hotkeys on your keyboard, such as like playing and stopping music, for example, through Spotify, doesn't work. It might be able to be configured in this here in your code. I haven't figured that out. Um, I was able to get sound coded. Uh, but yeah, I mean, other than that, there's a couple little quirks here and there. But for the most part, um, it really trump. I mean, being able to tile trumps everything. Um, admittedly, it does get a little bit overwhelming if you've got you know, one, two, three, four, five applications stacked. So usually the way I would operate for this is that you know, I'm just kind of like, I'm just, I'm just using one application I just have in this area, and it's just, I didn't want to shut them down. So then, you know, I just read this, blah, 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 and it's like, oh, okay, I'll just drag and drop this over here, is basically how I would operate with this if I was using it, something like, you know, something like this, like, okay, and then now I need to go back to CNN, okay, you know, something like that. Again, super, super powerful. Oh, the other nice thing I was going to show you is with tags, they work a little bit different. So for example, uh, I can just click something like this and then it brings everything over from here and then I can just rearrange like so. So the advantage to that is I can have CNN over here, put this in the floating mode, for example, and then be like, oh, I'm sorry, put this in the maximize mode, click this. And then now all of these are on maximize mode, but I go back over here and then now they're tiled. As you can see, like, oh, there's just so many possibilities once you kind of like wrap your head around this whole paradigm switch. So, and again, I don't lose out anything because I can immediately put this in floating mode. And then now I can, you know, have applications that are just like everyone's used to, right? They're not tiled, they're floating, and everyone's happy. I'll even cocky real quick. Um, so yeah. So this really is it for the Awesome Windows Manager. I know this video has been long overdue, and I know I've been rambling on, but I really, really like the Awesome Windows Manager. I would have to rank this right now as my favorite, although after about a month of using this, I do... I do miss Unity just because of the hot corners and how great it looks. Um, you know, this text up here doesn't look nearly as good as is as, as how text in the Unity desktop environment is displayed. So it's just hot corners, HUD, and uh, basically like all my global hotkeys working. Other than that, awesome Windows Manager in every other way just just destroys uh, most of the other desktop environments out there for my personal workflow. Again, you know, if you've got multiple applications, like two or three applications that you're looking at side by side all the time, which is me, like you know, if I'm learning to code, you know, I'll have I'll have Vim open up over here or whatever text editor. We can even have Genie if you'd like. Um, I'll have that open up over here. Uh, maybe I'll have my terminal to like run a bash script, uh, you know. Uh, so yeah, so I might hold on, set something up for you. And uh, 
So yeah, so maybe I would set something up like this, right? So this is to do all of my research. This is over here, Genie, to do all of my coding. And then maybe down here it's to, um, oh, let me click them, to, to run my, uh, my bash script, make sure it's outputting correctly. And then this is my file manager. So again, you can do cool setups like this, or I could just get rid of this entirely and go back to this and then, you know, have something just like this. Again, great for looking at applications up aside. Anyway, I've rambled on quite a bit. Um, if you find this uh, inspirational and you know you want to try it or you want to know more of how I set everything up, uh, let me know and uh, I'll, I'll do a, a, a series on that if people are truly interested in learning more about tiling window managers. Um, I really do feel that this is uh, something that is highly underutilized. Even if you don't use terminals all the time, I am proof that uh, it, it can be immensely helpful. Anyway, I um, hope you found this video helpful, and uh, yeah, check out uh, the next video when I release it. Thanks for watching.